Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Have you ever started a job full of excitement only to feel let down just months later? This common experience often stems from the high expectations we bring into the working world. So what is it that sets apart those who thrive from those who falter? Their ability to lead themselves. Instead of waiting for their jobs to provide joy and fulfillment, some people take action to create these feelings themselves. Elizabeth Lotardo, the author, met with her friends after they started their careers. While many felt discouraged, three remained enthusiastic. Their secret wasn't luck, it was a proactive attitude toward their work. By concentrating on what they could control, such as their mindset, actions and relationships, these individuals turned their ordinary jobs into something meaningful. The concept of self-leadership, blending philosophical insight with practical strategies, is key to finding fulfillment at work even when circumstances are less than ideal. In this summary, you'll learn how to transform your work experience by embracing the principles of self-leadership. You'll discover practical strategies to shift your mindset, take control of your actions, and cultivate meaningful relationships at work. Whether you're struggling with a micromanaging boss, feeling stuck in a mundane role, or simply seeking more fulfillment in your career, you'll come away knowing how to manage these challenges and turn your job into a source of joy and growth. Overcoming the career come down starting a new career often comes with a rush of excitement, but soon enough the reality sets in. Chapter 1 Overcoming the Career Come Down Many people find themselves disillusioned when the job that seems so promising turns out to be less fulfilling than expected. This common experience, sometimes called the career come down, happens when the initial thrill fades, leaving behind frustration and a sense of being stuck. One of the main ways some people manage to avoid this pitfall is through the practice of self leadership. Instead of waiting for joy, meaning, and opportunities to come to them, they actively create these experiences. They understand that while they can't control everything in their work environment, they can control their mindset, their actions, and the relationships they build. For example, if you're feeling overwhelmed by a micromanaging boss and endless deadlines, focus on becoming more efficient in your work and improving the communication between you. This proactive approach will lead to increased trust and more autonomy. You'll transform your daily work into something more fulfilling. If you're struggling with a lack of direction in your role and feel disconnected from your work, setting personal goals can make a difference. Seek out projects that align with your interests to inject meaning into your job. What once felt mundane can become an opportunity for growth and satisfaction. There are, of course, many other examples of how self-leadership can transform a career. Some people use it to climb the corporate ladder, while others find ways to balance their work with personal goals, creating a life that feels more aligned with their values. By applying the principles of self-leadership, you too can find greater satisfaction and joy in your work, no matter the challenges you face. In the following sections, you'll find out exactly how. Chapter 2 – How Your Mindset Influences Your Career Success Have you ever thought about how your mindset shapes your experience at work? In fact, the way you think influences everything from how you perceive your job to your interactions with colleagues and the challenges you encounter. There are four key mental abilities that can help you lead yourself effectively. Finding purpose, staying mentally flexible, taking action despite fear and embracing uncertainty. First, finding meaning in your daily tasks at work can greatly influence how you perceive your job. It's important to realize that every role, including yours, contributes to something larger. Whether you're supporting a colleague, playing a part in a project or serving customers, understanding the broader impact of your work can bring you a stronger sense of purpose. For example, call center employees found renewed motivation after meeting those who benefited from their efforts. Seeing how your work contributes to a bigger picture can provide clarity, energy, and satisfaction. Second, your brain looks for patterns that match your beliefs, often creating mental ruts that shape your perception. 
For instance, when focused on buying a car, you might suddenly notice that model everywhere. Not because it's more common than others, but because your awareness is heightened. This can lead to confirmation bias, meaning you notice only what aligns with your existing beliefs. To stay mentally flexible, recognize these ruts and deliberately choose new ways of thinking. Like stepping off a well-worn path to explore new territory, it may take effort at first, but it opens up new possibilities. Third, when facing challenges, your brain may fixate on worst-case scenarios, causing hesitation. Growth requires pushing through fear and taking action. One practical approach is to embrace 20 seconds of insane courage. In those moments when fear threatens to hold you back, commit to just 20 seconds of boldness. Enough time to start that conversation, pitch your idea or raise your hand. Often that brief burst of bravery is all it takes to move forward, quiet your fears and open doors to new opportunities. Finally, embracing uncertainty means seeing change as a growth opportunity. When faced with unforeseen challenges, reframe your perspective to find the opportunities. This mindset helps you focus on controlling your response rather than the situation itself. Focus on what you can influence and adapt quickly. Accepting that certainty is an illusion allows you to thrive amid change and unpredictability. By cultivating purpose, mental flexibility, courage and openness to uncertainty, you can transform your work experience, enhance performance and achieve greater satisfaction and fulfillment. Chapter 3. Optimizing Your Work Behavior How do your thoughts shape your actions and relationships? Your mindset influences your behavior, which in turn affects how you connect with others. This section focuses first on refining your behavior. By building on the foundation of your strong mindset, you can optimize your behavior to consistently show up as your best self. Let's start by looking at behaviors around goal setting. Setting goals is a powerful tool for personal and professional growth, but it's easy to fall into the trap of making promises you don't keep. When you set a goal and fail to follow through, it chips away at your confidence, making it harder to trust yourself. This erosion of self-reliance can lead to poor performance and a reluctance to take risks. Rather than pushing yourself to extremes, like waking up at dawn to hit the gym every day, focus on realistic intentions. The key to success is consistency, not intensity. By setting achievable goals and fulfilling them, you build momentum, making it easier to keep your promises. To lead yourself effectively, find a balance between your ambitions and what is truly feasible. Next, let's consider your to-do list. When your to-do list feels overwhelming, the solution isn't to find energy, but to generate it. In a demanding world filled with constant projects and deadlines, those who thrive aren't free from stress. They manage it by identifying which activities energize them and which ones exhaust them. By making intentional decisions about where to focus your mental energy, you can accomplish more while avoiding burnout. Understanding your energy patterns is key. Knowing which tasks invigorate you and which drain you helps in making smarter choices. Begin with tasks that feel enjoyable or energizing, allowing that momentum to carry you through the rest. Protect your focus time by setting clear boundaries, such as blocking off your calendar to minimize interruptions. The aim is to align your work with your natural energy flow, creating an environment that supports your best performance. Finally, let's think about when it's time to phone it in. In the early stages of a career, many people take every task seriously, often overestimating the significance of minor setbacks. Working long hours in high-pressure roles, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by challenges that, with time, seem less critical. The concept of phoning it in, deliberately opting for minimal effort, can be tough for high achievers to embrace, but it's essential for preventing burnout. Instead of striving for perfection in every area, it's more effective to direct your efforts toward what truly matters, allowing yourself to be less invested in lower-priority tasks. This approach helps manage your energy better, ensuring that your best work is reserved for the most significant areas. 
Success lies in setting realistic, consistent goals and managing your energy effectively, while knowing when to focus effort on high-priority tasks and minimize investment in less critical areas to avoid burnout. In the next sections, we'll focus on how to work with others, starting with your boss. Managing your relationship with your boss So let's turn now to how you can manage your boss effectively to create a more productive and positive working relationship. Chapter 4, Managing Your Relationship with Your Boss If you have a difficult boss, it might not be your fault, but the choice to stay in that situation is something to consider carefully. Your relationship with your boss is a significant factor in your career development, and while they may excel most of the time, they're also bound to have off days. Just like anyone else, bosses face their own set of pressures and challenges that you may not fully see or understand. Recognizing that even the best managers have their own struggles can help you approach your relationship with empathy and realism. To foster a better working relationship with your boss, treat it as a partnership. Focus on clear communication, set mutual expectations, and engage in meaningful one-to-one -one meetings. Instead of limiting these meetings to status updates, delve into short-term goals, long-term aspirations, and personal development opportunities. Asking your boss about their priorities and ensuring your tasks align with their expectations can lead to more fruitful discussions and prevent potential misunderstandings. This proactive approach not only keeps you in sync with your boss, but also demonstrates your commitment to your role and growth. At times, working with a difficult boss may seem challenging, but understanding their management style can make a significant difference. Managers can often be grouped based on how much clarity and control they provide. For instance, a boss who gives clear direction but prefers a hands-off approach might expect you to manage tasks independently. In contrast, a boss who likes to manage every detail closely may require frequent updates and reassurance. By identifying these traits, you can tailor your interactions to suit their style better, whether that means being more autonomous or providing regular check-ins to maintain trust and efficiency. But if you find yourself dealing with a boss who is truly toxic, someone who is consistently manipulative, condescending, or makes you feel undervalued, it's crucial to protect your well-being. In such cases, one effective strategy is to confirm your boss's expectations in writing after discussions. This could involve summarizing what was agreed upon and sending it back to your boss for confirmation. This method reduces the chances of miscommunication and protects you from unfair criticism later. It's also important to establish boundaries to keep your boss's negativity from affecting your personal life. Seek support outside of your work environment, whether through mentors, professional groups, or personal development activities, to maintain your growth and resilience even in a difficult situation. Your relationship with your boss is key to your career success. By understanding their management style and adapting your approach, you can manage even the most challenging dynamics and ensure your own growth and well-being at work. Now let's turn to your colleagues. Managing relationships with your coworkers, a new head of HR noticed that employees frequently came to him with complaints about their colleagues, missed deadlines, unresponsive emails, or standoffish behavior in meetings. Chapter 5 Managing Relationships with Your Coworkers Rather than addressing these issues directly with those involved, they chose to grumble in private. To shift this unproductive culture, he began responding to complaints with a simple question. What did they say when you told them? This approach made it clear that many of the issues stemmed from unspoken or unclear expectations and encouraged employees to communicate directly and resolve problems before they escalated. To manage your relationships with colleagues effectively, it's essential to define expectations clearly from the beginning and address any lapses directly. Expectations can be communicated through explicit conversations or subtly modeled through your behavior. The goal is to ensure everyone is on the same page and understands what's expected, reducing the likelihood of misunderstandings and unmet expectations that often cause tension. If expectations aren't met, instead of letting resentment build, approach the situation factually by referencing the agreed-upon terms and asking if anything has changed. This keeps the focus on resolving the issue rather than personalizing the conflict. 
In addition to setting clear expectations, protecting yourself from workplace negativity is essential. Negative emotions can spread easily, and constantly engaging in complaints with colleagues can create a cycle of pessimism that leaves everyone feeling worse. Instead of validating complaints or contributing to a negative atmosphere, try steering the conversation in a different direction or distancing yourself from persistent negativity. This approach helps maintain your mental well-being and contributes to a more positive work environment. Managing interactions with colleagues who may not meet their responsibilities is another important strategy. While you can't control others' actions, you can control your responses and protect yourself. If you know a colleague often fails to deliver, consider using tactics like building in buffer time for deadlines or having honest conversations about your concerns. Keeping a written record of communications can also protect you from being unfairly blamed if projects go awry. By understanding your tendencies, such as a propensity to people please, you can better manage your reactions to others' behavior and lead with empathy and clear communication, making it easier to work with a diverse group of people. So remember that building strong working relationships requires a proactive approach to setting clear expectations and addressing issues directly as they arise. By protecting yourself from negativity and managing challenging interactions thoughtfully, you can maintain a positive and productive work environment. Final Summary In this summary to Lead Yourself by Elizabeth Letardo, you've learned that self-leadership is the key to finding fulfillment and success in your career, no matter the circumstances. By taking control of your mindset, actions, and relationships, you can transform your work experience from one of frustration to one of purpose and satisfaction. You've explored strategies for developing good work behaviors, managing your energy and managing the challenges of working with your boss and your colleagues. Take charge of your career and lead yourself to the fulfillment and success you deserve. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.